Lecture 13.1, Nonlinear State Space Models. Recall from Lecture 3.2, I know, just a few minutes ago, uh, that a state space model has the general form, dx dt, so the time rate of change of the state vector, equals some function of the state, the input, and time. Okay, so that's the general state equation. And the general output equation is that y, the output, is equal to some function g of x, u, and t. Where f and g are vector-valued functionals that depend on the system. Nonlinear state space models are those for which f is a nonlinear functional of either x or u. For instance, a state variable x1 might appear as x1 squared, or two state variables might combine as x1, x2, or an input u might enter the equations as log u1. These are just some examples. So, uh, so far, uh, most of our models have been linear, and now we're going to consider what happens when those state space models are nonlinear. Uh, notice that if g is nonlinear, it's not that big of a deal because this is just an algebraic equation for the output y. Um, it's the solution of the state equation dx dt. If f is nonlinear, that gets complicated. So nonlinear state space models are those for which the state equation is nonlinear. Autonomous and non-autonomous systems. An autonomous system is one for which f of x, with neither time nor input appearing explicitly. So f is a function of x, meaning that the state equation is a function of only the states, and not of the input explicitly or time explicitly. A non-autonomous system is one for which either time or input do appear explicitly in f. It turns out that we can always write non-autonomous systems as autonomous by substituting in u of t, so substituting in u wherever it appears in the equation, and introducing an extra state variable for t. So this is a nice little um, technique, and I believe that Strogatz, the, the um, sort of non-linear systems, uh, guru, if you will, is the one who introduced that technique, although I don't know for sure, but it's the first place I've seen it. Um, therefore, without loss of generality, we will focus on ways of analyzing autonomous systems. This will have a distinct advantage in chapter 14, we get to phase space analysis. Okay, equilibrium. As in lecture 5.2, so going back to to chapter 5 now, um, an equilibrium state, also called a stationary point, x, is one for which dx dt equals 0. In most cases, this occurs only when the input u is a constant u and for time varying systems at a given time t. For autonomous systems, remember um, if we are going to um, use our uh, autonomous systemizer, if you will, this technique up here, we can rewrite these non-autonomous systems as autonomous, so we can do this for autonomous systems. Equilibrium occurs when the following holds. f of x equals zero. Okay. This is a system of non-linear algebraic equations, which can be challenging to solve for equilibrium x. However, frequently, Several solutions, that is, equilibrium states, do exist, so we can solve for them. Now, this is, in general, a uh, nonlinear set of, of algebraic equations. Sometimes we can solve a nonlinear set of equations um, pretty straightforwardly. Other times, it's, it's rather complicated. So uh, finding those equilibrium points analytically can be challenging. Usually, though, we can find them um, by hook or by crook, either numerically or graphically. Um, so there's usually some way to find those equilibrium states. 
and they're important. We're going to keep talking about equilibrium states moving forward when describing nonlinear systems. They're particularly um, useful when when trying to describe and characterize an, um, a nonlinear system.